Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Anna Morpides with Many Hearts Counseling. And today is gonna be the start of week three of uh, healing or anxious attachment style. Forgive me, I feel like I've lost my voice a little bit. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the best that I can to get through today <clears throat> because it's so important to keep going through with these um, affirmations and continuing to cultivate self-love. Um, I was checking in yesterday because I felt like maybe life was a little bit more challenging than I normally would have liked it to be. But then when I went to bed and I was doing the gratitude with my, with my rock, trying to find the best thing that happened to me throughout my day, I actually realized that <clears throat> My day was actually not so shitty and it wasn't so bad, but it was more of like my thoughts that were taking over, that were not in conjunction or in alignment with what I normally would have in my daily progression. So great reminder that our thoughts can be so powerful, the mind is so powerful, but then when we dig into gratitude and self-love we can literally see things from a different perspective we can be objective not the subject of the emotions that are overtaking us because the emotions stem from thoughts and those thoughts are <clears throat> usually unhelpful and like not true about what it is that we're actually thinking and feeling about self is not true in relation to our reality. So we're gonna continue on with um, day 15 from the book, The Magic, the sequel to The Secret, and The Secret is the more grateful we are for things that we have today, the more chances we're gonna create to bring in more things that we're grateful of. <clears throat> so day 15 is all about magically healing our relationships. If we have had a difficult or broken relationship or suffering from a broken heart or hold any resentment or blame towards another person for anything, we can change it through gratitude. Gratitude will magically improve any difficult relationship, whether that person is a husband or a wife, a brother or sister, son or daughter, partner, boss, business client, work colleague, mother or father-in-law, parent, friend or neighbor, and I know I'm a true testament to this because for challenging relationships that I've had in my life, I remember this particular chapter so well because once you do your gratitude for someone, you let go of anything else that causes resentment. So this is so, 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 so important. When we're faced with a difficult relationship or a challenging situation in a relationship, in almost all cases, we're not in the least be grateful for the other person. Instead, we're busy blaming the other person for the problems we have with them. And that means we don't have a shred of gratitude. Blame is never going to make a relationship better. And it's never going to make your life better either. In fact, the more you blame, the worse the relationship gets and the more your life gets. So whether it's a current situation or a past relationship, if you harbor bad feelings towards another person, Practicing gratitude will eliminate those feelings. Why would you want to remove your bad feelings about another person? Because holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one that gets burned. So we're gonna let go of that today. <clears throat> For example, if you have an ex-partner who is connected to you, through your children and their relationship isn't good, look at your children's faces and realize that they wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for your ex-partner. Your children's lives are the ones of the most precious gift you have. Look at your children and give thanks to your ex-partner for their lives every single day, as well as bringing peace and harmony to the relationship through your example. <clears throat> you will be teaching your children the greatest tool for their life, gratitude. Or if you're suffering from a broken heart, which a lot of us in this anxious attachment style do, 
or grief due to a relationship having ended, you can use gratitude's magical power to transform your pain. Gratitude transforms emotional pain into healing and happiness faster than anything else. And the story of my parents is a perfect example of that. So she goes on to talk about um, her parents, how they were grateful to be with each other and it was the most beautiful marriage she had ever seen. But then when her father died, her mother understandably suffered from an enormous grief. And after months of suffering, she began to use gratitude's magical power. And despite her immense grief and pain, she looked for the things to be grateful for. So she transmuted that energy. So for today's magical practice, we're going to look back for a hot coal that is burning our life and literally turn that into a gold nugget through gratitude. Choose one difficult, problematic, or broken relationship that you have wanted to improve. It doesn't matter if the person is in your life still or a past relationship, or if the, pers if the person is no longer in your life. Sit down and write 10 things you're grateful for about the person you've chosen. Think back through the history of the relationship and list the great things about the person <clears throat> are the great things that you received from that relationship. The easiest way to do this is to think back to the things that were before the relationship deteriorated or ended. If the relationship was never good, then think hard about any good qualities in the person because they are there. This magical practice is not about who is right or wrong. No matter what you feel someone has done to you, no matter what someone said, or didn't do, you can magically heal the relationship and you don't need the other person in order to heal it. So you're gonna say the name. So for example, George, I'm grateful for you for um, being with me through one of the hardest stages of my life. And you're gonna say why and thank you, thank you, thank you. And then she lists all these other examples I'm grateful for everything you did to try to make our marriage work. I'm grateful for our children, if you have some. I'm grateful to you for your hard work and long hours you put in to support our family. I'm grateful for your, the precious moments I had with our children as they were growing up. I'm grateful for your support when I went through a difficult time of grief and loss, which is what I was saying before, because um, one of my biggest interest in my life was there through I was going while, while I was going through one of the biggest losses in my life. I'm grateful to you for the times when I was sick and you did the best to take care of me and my children. And then so, so, and so. So by the time you finish your gratitude of 10 things, you should feel much better about that person and their relationship. And if you're using gratitude's magical power to improve a current relationship, you will see the relationship will begin to change miraculously before your eyes. It only takes one person to magically change a relationship through gratitude, but it is the person who uses gratitude who receives the benefits in their whole life. So in the future, if your relationship becomes challenging, remember to use this magical practice immediately. You will stop the difficulties before they get any bigger and instead you will increase the magic in the relationship. And I feel like I'm a true testament to this because the predominant masculine in my life that projected back to me all my unhelpful core beliefs, <clears throat> my attachment style, which was an anxious one, when I was practicing my gratitude, I would no longer have resentment, but I would cultivate so much gratitude for this person. So then I would look at them in a different way. They would treat me in a different way and it like did magically transform my relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for our magic practice today, number 15, we are going to count our blessings like we always do. So I know from last night's um, um, recording that I did, I really did immerse myself in the, the practice of saying thank you for any good news that I receive. And I was practicing this morning my thank yous for the experiences I was going to have throughout the day. And I have to say they were quite great. 
and I did receive great news. Um, something that I was like trying to manifest and I've been praying for for a bit. Um, it has manifested and even though it takes time and effort to even deal with the space that is created between changing something because something that is familiar and now becomes unfamiliar because we're creating a change that is also okay to be with too and remember to give your gratitude for that space because you're allowing for something else to come in and then out of our 10 blessings that we're doing five about ourselves you're gonna say you're gratitude about yourself and that you're grateful in your life and then you're going to choose one difficult or broken relationship that you want to improve, like she said, and put in 10 things that you're grateful for that and see if that makes a difference. And if you view that person and or situation differently after you do your gratitude and before you go to sleep, <clears throat> you're going to hold your rock and you're going to go through your day and think about the best thing that happened to you today so you can give yourself an opportunity to go to sleep in a more gratitude sort of way so then your body can not be in anxiety or ruminating or dealing with challenges in your life that are supposed to just be a lesson for us to become a better version of ourselves and then the best way that we can become a better version of ourselves is to immerse ourselves in the things that we're grateful for so we can keep our vibration high so then we can continue on with experience life in a more graceful, positive, optimistic way, no matter what takes place. And then we're going to go right into our mirror work with Louise Hay to continue to cultivate that self-love because that is what's going to create that safety within ourselves and take away from the anxious attachment and bring us more into a secure attachment style with a positive self-view so then we are the ones on our pedestal and then we don't make anything mean about ourselves when situations or people leave us because they're meant to leave us we don't make it mean that we're not worthy we're not good enough because we have cultivated that safety in ourselves and we're not seeking it from anyone outside as within so without so Day 15. Forgiving ourselves and those who have hurt us. So that goes kind of hand in hand with creating magical relationships. For the past two weeks, you have worked hard on releasing many of the old beliefs that were blocking you. I know it wasn't an easy task, so give yourself time to celebrate your progress. How does it feel today to look in the mirror and feel so much better? Take a deep breath and release this breath and say, I am letting go of my past and I feel great. Forgiveness is a difficult area for all of us. We built up these blocks that blind us for many years. Take my hand and together let's work on learning to forgive ourselves and those who have hurt us. You can do it. Forgiveness opens our hearts to self-love. If you have a problem with loving yourself, you can get stuck in an unforgiving state. Many of us carry grudges for years and years and years. We may feel self-righteous because of what someone did to us. I call this being stuck in the prison of self-righteousness resentment. We get to be right, but we never get to be happy. You may disagree and say, but you don't know what that person did to me. It's unforgivable. Being unwilling to forgive is a terrible thing to do to yourself. Bitterness is like swallowing a teaspoon of poison every day. It accumulates and harms you. It's impossible to be healthy and free when you keep yourself bound to the past. One of the biggest spiritual lessons you can learn is to understand that everyone is doing the best they can at any given moment. And this is so true because everyone seems to have like their own wounds. And when people do things to us and we feel like, oh, they wronged us or they did this, they're just acting out from their own wounds as well. And, and like the more, like I know that like my wounded virgin would only bring in other wounded versions of other people's selves in order for us to like have that blueprint for our healing. So I get this now. So there's no way I could ever be mad at anyone for hurting me. I can only just be grateful for the lessons 
that they are teaching me so I can become my best version and come into my wholeness and completeness within, like within me. This is where all the power is. So people can only do so much with their understanding, awareness, and knowledge that they have. Invariably, people who mistreat others were themselves mistreated in childhood. The greater the level of violence, the greater their inner pain, and the more they may lash out. And that's also something that I know really well. The meanly someone talks to you, the more meanly they talk to themselves. Um, the more someone is not able to hold you in your emotions, the more they're not able to hold themselves in their emotions. And that's how it goes. They are a reflection of what is going on in their inner world. So what we hold on to, it's over. We can let it go. We can allow ourselves to be free. Come out of this personal prison you have built and step into the sunshine of your life. If the situation is continuing, then ask yourself, why do you think so little of yourself that you still put up with it? Why do you stay in such a situation? You have a choice. You can stay stuck and bitter, or you can do better. You're, you can do yourself a favor by willing, willingly forgiving the past and letting it go, and then moving on to create a joyous, fulfilling life. You have the freedom to make your life anything you want it to be because you have freedom of choice. The purpose of today's lesson is to help you Raise your self-esteem to such a level that you will allow only loving experiences into your life. Please do not waste your time trying to get even. It will not work. Gratitude and forgiveness is what works. So drop the past and work on loving yourself now. Then you can have a wonderful time. When you do your forgiveness work, it is not necessarily to go to the people involved and tell them that you forgive them. Sometimes you will want to do this, but you do not have to do this. The major work in forgiveness is done in your heart and in front of the mirror. Remember, forgiveness is seldom for others and it is for you. So many people have told me that they truly forgive someone. Then a month or two later, they have received a phone call or email from that person asking to be forgiven. And it's true because I had a situation like, like literally there was a situation a couple years ago where there was a challenge that happened and I received a message from this wonderful soul um, three days ago, out of the blue, two years later, explaining why they weren't able to be um, more present um, with me and the friendship that we had in that moment. And it never has anything to do about us. If anything, they were saying the most beautiful things about about myself, but they were expressing how, how hard of a time they were having in that moment in their life. And that I was actually inspirational and um, intriguing. But that you have to take as a compliment because the lighter you become and the more grateful you become and the more self-love you cultivate, we do become a catalyst for other people to do the same. And it's going to take them the same amount of work to get to where we are today because it took me six years to get here. So what's two years for someone to get there or maybe 10 years or whatever it might be. We hold space for people to become into their own healed version while we are hearing, healing our own selves. So today we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to say to the person that we have resentment for, I forgive you, I set you free. You are free and I am free. And notice how you feel. You may feel resistance or you may feel relief. If you feel resistant, just breathe and affirm, I am willing to release all resentment. As you continue to do this exercise today or another day, expand your list of people to forgive Remember, forgiveness is not an event, it's a process. You may need to keep working on one person a little longer and each time going a little deeper into forgiveness. Uh, for day 15, she also says, it doesn't really matter how we do this exercise. It's about doing it the right way for you. The universe and forgiveness see that you're showing up 
And at times of forgiveness is like peeling away the layers of an onion. And we peel away the layers of an onion when we want to come into our true selves. We peel the layers of the onion of the unhelpful core beliefs, the resentment, the anger, the sadness. Peel it all away so you can get into the heart of like where true unconditional love lies and peace and solitude and non-anxiety what's the opposite of non-anxiety calm calm peace calmness and for day 15 meditation i'm so sorry about my voice but i invite you to just close your eyes lie down sit upright i'm gonna speak the least among words as possible right now so you can get the full experience but you know the drill of like falling into your heart, getting out of your head, breathing in deeply, and repeating these affirmations for forgiveness. The door to my heart opens inward. I move through forgiveness to love. As I change my thoughts, the world around me changes. The past is over, so it has no power now. The thoughts of this moment create my future. This is the truth of my being and I accept it as so. All is well in my life. The past is over and done. I am not my parents or their patterns or resentment. We are all doing the best that we can at any given moment and this is also true for me. The past is over and done. I choose to open my heart and allow love, compassion, and understanding to flash out all memories of past pain. I am free to be all that I can be. It is no fun being a victim. I refuse to be helpless anymore. I claim my own power. I give myself the gift of freedom from the past and move with joy into the now. There is no problem so big or so small that it cannot be solved with love. I am ready to be healed. I am willing to forgive and all is well. I know that old negative patterns no longer limit me. I let them go with ease. As I forgive myself, it becomes easier to forgive others. I forgive myself for not being perfect. I am living the very best that I know. It is now safe for me to release all of my childhood traumas and move into love. I forgive everyone in my past for all my perceived wrongs. I release them with love. All the changes in my life that lie before me are positive ones and I am safe. And so it is. And I welcome you to stay with those beautiful thoughts if you want to, repeating these affirmations. You can rewind the video or you can come to in the room. And I do want to say that yesterday when I did the exercise, actually this morning when I did a meditation with my gratitude of all the things that I wanted to go well in my day today, I did this meditation um, connecting to my inner child where I was talking to it and it really came to me so vividly and the one thing that it was still talking about which was reflecting my shitty thoughts about yesterday was why why didn't why didn't she love me and i was like referring to my mom and like i know that that's like my pain and my sadness that still like wants to run my predominant thoughts and just overall vibration, like why can I not be loved? But I know that my mom had a stepmom and she lost her mom and she was severely abused and was not, like she wasn't even allowed to go to school and like she suffered so much. So like she didn't even have love for herself. So how could she like give that when you don't cultivate that? But this is a generation, we're changing it. We're like 
in the age of Aquarius. So we're changing all these intergenerational patterns. And I'm going to link this meditation because I would love to hear to see what it is that is still running your programming that creates that shitty feeling in your life and prevents you from like really embracing all the positive things that are happening because the mind is so powerful and unconsciously because 95% of our programming runs subconsciously and unconsciously. That belief is the one that predominates. But when we're conscious and we draw into our heart and we like really try to hear what that is, we can change it through these affirmations and the gratitude. So I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much again for being with me on day 15. I hope tomorrow that my voice is going to be much better. I love you so much and I'll see you.